These are the different outcomes geometrically, and now we're going to look at how to solve these using a matrix. So we'll jump into 8.2. All right, so you've seen linear systems, so what about the other words, augmented matrices? So let's talk about a matrix first. So what is a matrix? So it is a rectangular array of numbers. If I could spell. Of, now for us, it'll be of real numbers. You could of course have a rectangular array of complex numbers or other types of numbers, but ours will be real. They'll generally be uh, integers or fractions. So ours will generally have rational numbers. They're usually going to be written with square brackets. And you'll have the first number in the upper left corner. It'll be in row 1, column 1. And then the second number reading across will be in row 1, column 2. The third number will be in row 1, column 3. Now, I don't know how many numbers they're going to be. But we can use a letter N for the number of columns. So the last entry in the first row is going to be row 1, column n. And as for the number of rows, let's say there's m rows. So the second entry is in row 2, column 1. The next entry is in row 2, column 2, etc., etc., to the second row, nth column. Now the third entry going down will be A31, row 3, column 1. And the pattern should be pretty obvious going down. This will be row M, column 1, row M, column 2. And what will be the last entry in the bottom right? M, M, M. column, or M, N. M, N. So it'll be row M column n, and you can fill in everything in between. And a fast way to abbreviate this is just writing AIJ, just to correspond to every little a in the other matrix. So we'll use capital letters for matrices generally, and we want to write their dimension. <coughs> we write that as a subscript, and it looks like a multiplication. It just means m by n. So this just means this is an m by n matrix. And to remember the order, it always goes rows, col uh, columns. So rows by columns. And the way I remember it is RC, remote control. <laughs> now it's a little strange because the letter that goes first actually counts your vertical position, what row you're in, which generally is what Y is used for. And then the second coordinate is the column, which is your horizontal position. So that's usually what x is used for. So it's a little bit backwards from our normal coordinates, but it's the way we uh, count positions in matrices. All right, so that's how to write a matrix. And now let's talk about <laughs> augmenting matrices. Augmented matrices correspond to linear systems. And this correspondence, so 
So this correspondence is similar to knowing about uh, zeros correspond to factors in a polynomial. So if you have a zero, you have a factor and vice versa. So this correspondence is best shown through an example. So we'll take a linear system, x plus y minus z equals negative 1, 4x minus 3y plus 2z equals 16, and 2x minus 2y minus 3z equals 5. All right, so we have a linear system right here, and this is going to correspond to an augmented matrix. What do you think the dimensions of this matrix will be? How many rows? Three. Three. Mm, less easy, how many columns? There's at least three. There's actually going to be four because there's basically four, uh, three variables and then a constant to keep track of. So there's basically four rows, uh, uh, three columns, four rows. <coughs> what I'm going to do with the purple marker is redraw the coefficients. So I see a four minus three plus two in the last row, positive two, minus two, minus three. Oh, don't forget the constants. What coefficients are in the first equation? What's coefficient of x? One, don't forget those. Coefficient of y is one, coefficient of z, negative one. So don't forget the coefficients that aren't explicitly written down. So now I'm going to go over to this matrix and basically copy over all the purple stuff. So we got 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 4, minus 3, 2, 16, 2, minus 2, minus 3, 5. Be careful with your spacing, and what I mean is, well, the way I wrote it, it's pretty easy to tell that's a 2 and a 16. Here would be a really bad way to write these. Like that. So you don't want to, you want to keep your spacing so it's obvious what's grouped up. Okay. Or even worse, that would be even worse, looks like a 21 instead of a 16. You can write the pluses if you want in here, uh, but you're going to find out that if you do that, you're probably going to write more than you want to be writing. You can draw some vertical lines to keep things separated if you want to. Hopefully you don't need horizontal lines, your spacing should be good enough, especially if you're writing on line paper. You're going to find some uh, resources use a line to separate your constants from your variables. Another thing to keep track of, the way we wrote it, we have x, y, z columns, and the last one will be your constant column. So just remember where they come from. All right, so this is the correspondence. This is probably the easiest part of solving a linear system, is the co correspondence. So I'm going to write down a matrix C, and then I want you to write down the three equations and tell me the solution. So write down the three equations, and just like before, we're going to use the variables x, y, z, and then constant column. So write down the three equations.
So your first equation is x equals 3, and then y equals 4, and then z equals negative 7. So these are really nice equations. They're already written out so that we know exactly what point this is referring to. And this is a point, if you write it x, y, z, like you would a standard three-dimensional point, 3, 4, negative 7. And this is what we call, if this was our system, this is a uh, single solution. What dimension does this system live in? Three. So it lives in three dimensions. So if I go back to the last section where I talked about, oh, there's one possibility <laughs> in R3 we didn't talk about, which is the one we just looked at. So we saw you could have a line in common, which is not what we had. You can have nothing in common. You can have the entire plane in common. How in the world can you have one point in common? So let's see if I have, I want to try to draw this well, which I don't have anything in my notes. All right, so I'm going to try to draw three planes intersecting in one point. So it starts out with two planes intersecting in a line, and then a third plane cutting through that line. So I'll redraw the two planes intersecting in a line. And now there's a third plane. That's supposed to intersect this line in exactly one spot. So probably the easiest way to think about this, you have two pieces of paper, two planes making an X on your desk, and then your desk is a third plane. So two planes are intersecting in a vertical line, sitting on top of your table, which is a third plane. So they're all intersecting in one point. You can, of course, have them at slightly different angles and still intersect in one point. So that's what I try to draw here. It doesn't really look like a table at the bottom. You could say, maybe to make it easier, you could say the third plane is the uh, piece of paper you're writing on. So these two planes are coming out, and then the third plane is the piece of paper you're writing on. OK, so this is the situation we just had. This is uh, intersecting in one point. And these are all non-parallel. Parallel planes intersecting in a single point. So that's the situation that we just got. And now we'll look at some more possibilities. <coughs> So this is what a single point will look like. And this has no free variables. And the way I see no free variables, there is the uh, one that locked down x. Here's the one that locked down y. And here's the one that locked down z. So this is how x, y, and z are not free. So I'm going to show you free variables in examples instead of defining them. So our next example will have one free variable. <coughs> 
So write out the three equations. The last equation is kind of silly. What is the third equation inside this matrix? Zero, zero. zero equals zero, or zero x plus zero y plus zero z equals zero. But we'll just shortcut it and write it zero equals zero. So that last equation doesn't tell you anything. You don't really need it. It doesn't bring anything to the system. So there's really just two equations in this system. All right, free variables. You can see the free variable happening right there. So we see that z is free. So z is free. Why is z free? Because there is no 1 locking uh, z down. So there's no 1 right there. What, um, so does that just mean there's no 1 in that column? Because if there was a 1 in one of the other equations, would it lock it down? Or is it just that last call? Last so it's the, <coughs> the idea is we're going to turn the bottom left corner into a triangle of zeros. Uh -huh. And when you do that, uh, you'll uh, generally get numbers that are not zero right here. And I'll show you how to turn those not zero numbers into ones. It's pretty easy to do. But if in the process of turning the bottom left corner into zeros, you also get zero down there, that's what we call free. So we're going to call them, there's no leading zero in the Z column. Now there's an easy uh, elimination we can make. What can we eliminate here? Or how can we clean up this first equation? We can plug in y equals 2 and get out an alternative system that means the exact same thing. So if y equals 2, we have x plus 2 equals 3. Subtract 2, x equals 1, y equals 2. So that would be the exact same system right there. Just plugging in 2 in for y. All right, so z is free. What does that mean? There is no restriction on z. z can be any number. And it's not going to mess up our equations. So you can see either one, z is free. So how do we fix that issue? z needs to equal something. So either way, however you write it, we're going to let z equal t, where t is any real number. And so we write it out as a point, x, y, z equals 1, 2, t. So that's a little strange to have a t in there. What does that mean? If you think about how to plot this out, x is 1, y is 2. So we have the point 1, 2. If z is 0, we have this point right here. So that's height 0. We're not going up or down on the z-axis. If z is positive, if z is getting bigger, we get this. Uh, line segment going up. And if z is negative, it will go downwards. So the idea of this one free variable means there's one dimension or one direction that we can travel freely. In this case, it's directly up and down. So do the, ax the axes change then? And th this going up and down just comes from the fact that uh, z could be anything it wanted to. And also, <clears throat> you'll see soon that we won't be trying to graph these out. I, it's 
really hard to graph in three dimensions, so we're not going to spend much time trying to graph. I can only graph really simple things in three dimensions, it's like a vertical line. It's not hard to graph. So let's look at another example of a, a free variable. don't have to have the same number of equations as dimensions. So this system is, has less equations than dimensions, and that's totally OK. You can still write the two equations out. So the two variables that are locked down are x and y. Z, however, there is nothing even in the entire row for Z. So Z is free. So we're going to let Z equal T, which is any real number T. So we'll just write that any T in R. I just made the 1, 2, and 3 up. That was some equation that just came out of my brain as an example. I think she's talking about the coefficients when you rewrote the equations. Oh, wow. I used 1, 1, 1. Wow. Good point. <laughs> 1, 2, 3. The other guys are 1, 1. Yeah. Oops. All right. So there we go. That's a different system. All right, we could try to graph this. Uh, it's not going to be a vertical line. Until you get into linear algebra or calc 3, I'm not going to worry too much about how this will look geometrically. But the point is, you have one free variable going on here. Uh, so there's, one more, there's two more possibilities. You can have two free variables. We'll deal with that later. But let's look at uh, inconsistent or no solution. Write out three, the three equations for this matrix and think about why this is no solution. So why is this going to be no solution? Zero can't equal two. Yeah, there's no way to make zero equal two. If we look, it doesn't matter what x or y is, or z, you're not going to get zero to equal two. So this reason right here is this is why there's no solution. There's no way to make that last equation true. So there's no way to satisfy. So this is the reason that's inconsistent or no solution. So if you're looking at the matrix, the best way to think about it in a matrix, you have a row of zeros followed by not zero. So that's how you're going to see it in a matrix. Now, a row of zeros is totally OK as long as there's a 0 on the constant side. So we saw that. A bunch of zeros are just fine up here. 
0 equals 0, no problems. <coughs> so a row of zero is okay, but not a row of zeros that ends in not 0. So now the tricky part of how do we take any matrix and turn it into one of these nice matrices right here. So these ones are in a nicer form. So this form is called reduced row echelon form, and this is our goal. So reduced row echelon form in a 3 by 3 matrix. In a 3 by 3 matrix, it refers to getting zeros in the bottom left corner. Now, <clears throat> there are three moves that we're allowed to make in order to get to here, and this is our goal. So these moves are called row operations. And this is how we get two row echelon form. And this process is called Gaussian elimination. So there are only three row operations. We'll do the easy two first. So first row operation, we'll start with the easiest, which is swapping two rows. So I want the one in the upper left corner, not the lower left corner. So I'm going to swap these two rows right here. And our matrix, <coughs> I use triple equal signs to compare equations. And I'm going to keep doing that with matrices. So a matrix is just hiding three equations <coughs> inside, or two equations in this case. So I'm going to use a triple equal sign to compare systems here. So this system is the same as I'm swapping these two. And that's the notation we're going to use for swapping. Just two arrows pointing to the two rows we're going to interchange. So that's pretty much all there is to a swap right there. What does this correspond to with equations? If you think about equations you're writing down, it just means you're going to change the order you're writing equations. So in the world of equations, it's not very exciting. It's just changing the order you're writing them. So that's the first operation, swap two rows. The next operation is multiply a row by a non-zero number. What would be a good number to multiply row 1 by? So how can I turn that 2 into a 1? What can I multiply it by? 1 half. One half. All right, to multiply by half, we're just going to use the standard uh, wrapping in parentheses notation to say multiply by half. When you multiply a row, you better multiply 
every single thing inside the row. So just you're just basically <laughs> distributing across the row. So you got to treat everything in the row the same. So we have one, zero, one, four. And if we think about what happened in the equation, we had 2x plus 2y equals, oh, 2x plus 2z equals 8. And of course, y plus 3z equals 2. And we turn that into x plus z equals 4. And it didn't change the second equation. So that corresponds to the algebraic operation, multiply both sides of your equation. That's all that operation corresponds to. All right, so those are the easy operations. Now for the more complicated one. This last one is going to correspond to elimination, which is using one equation, adding a multiple of that to another equation. Usually you're doing it to eliminate a variable. So this last one is add a multiple of one row to another. So we're going to add a multiple of one row to another. So the matrix I'm going to use is 1, 2, 1, 3, and then 0, 1, 2, 4. <clears throat> now what I want to do is use the 1 to eliminate the 2 above it. So I'm going to use that 1 to eliminate the 2 above it. In order to do that, I'm going to subtract minus 2, row 2, and then add it to row 1 and store that result in row 1. So I believe your textbook uses notation similar to this. There's a few res depending on what resource you look at, they're going to use different notation. So we're going to add two times row one and then store the result in row one. And the re resulting matrix here, <coughs> you have to multiply everything in row two by two. So zero times two is zero, plus one is one. Next up, we have two plus negative two times one. The reason we chose negative 2 is so I would get 0 here. So I want this entire number to be 0. That's my motivation for doing this. And then I have to do negative <laughs> 2 times 2. So we got 1 plus negative 2 times 2. And the constant part, you still have to do the same thing in the constant term. We have plus negative 2 times 4. And I'm just copying the second row over. And now reduce this down. So we get 1, 0, negative 3, negative 5, 0, 1, 2, 4. And this corresponds to elimination. So this is the most common row operation we're going to be performing. And I'll perform this, I think I'll do two examples slowly, and then any other examples I do will do way faster. So this will probably be a new, this row reduction will be a new process for you. So you're probably going to need to practice a little bit extra at the beginning so that it feels less weird. Because it's going to feel very strange, but it's all operations you've done before. 
just in a different context. So none of this is difficult, it's just new and a little complicated. So you just need practice. So let's start on an example. So reduced row echelon forms lots of right, so I'll just write R R E F. <coughs> so our first row, three, negative one, negative one, seven, two, zero, two, eight, zero, one, one, zero. And the strategy, so you know the rules, you know the goal. Now the strategy is go one column at a time. Generally start with the first column. So that's gonna be our strategy here. So one column at a time. So here is one way to get rid of the two. Here's a bad way to get rid of the two because we'll introduce fractions. So I could use a three to knock out the two. The only problem is I'll have to add negative two thirds row one plus row two and store it in row two. But if I go with two thirds, I'm gonna have thirds hanging around everywhere. So I don't think, most of us don't like fractions. So let's see how we can avoid fractions. Let's do something a little strange. Let's just do negative row one plus row two. So our new matrix we get, <clears throat> row one and row three staying the same. So I'm gonna copy row one and row three over. All right, now for row two. One thing uh, you won't, don't need about the notation, you don't necessarily need the last part of this. You can erase all that in your, so one more time, I'm going to erase that part right there. Now it's okay to erase it because of where I wrote minus R1. So if we think about that minus R1, what that means is it's written on row two. So it's written on the second row, and it says I'm gonna subtract row one. From where? From where it's written, which is row two. All right, what is, so we have negative three plus two is negative one. And next up we have negative negative one, which is positive one plus zero is one. And last up, negative times negative uh, is positive one plus two is three. And don't forget about the constant column, negative seven plus eight is positive one. So any questions on the actual results of the operation? So the reduced row echelon form isn't getting the zeros in the corner? It's just making sure everything is so as reduced as it can be. My, my goal is to get zeros here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is swap the two rows right here. So we'll do a row swap. And I want my negative one in the first column to be a positive one. So multiply it by negative one. And 
Now we're ready to get rid of this three. How do I get that three out of there? How many row ones do I have to add to row two? How many row ones do I have to add to row two? It's almost three. All right. I have to either subtract three row ones or add negative three row ones. So it's minus three row one. So I'm going to multiply everything in row one by negative three and add it to everything in row two. So we have negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 3 gives me the 0. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, minus 1 is 2. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, minus 1 is 8. <coughs> and last, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, plus 7 is 10. All right, row 1 is finished. We got our zeros, so row, row one, column one is finished. Ready for column two. So things I want to do is basically turn, uh, I want one, one, one in column two and the rest zeros if I can help it. So I think it'll be easier to use the one at the bottom to knock out the other two that are not uh, that are not zero. So in row one, all I have to do is add row three because one minus one is zero. So that'll knock out the one in the second column. How do I knock out the two in row two? How many row threes do I have to add? So I have to add negative 2, row 3. So negative 2, row 3 will knock out that 2. So row 1, so 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. And 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. The second row, I have a 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And negative 2 plus 8 is 6. And we get 0 plus 10. So keep the goal in mind, we want basically zeros in the lower left corner. So what would be a good <laughs> operation to get closer to the goal? What's that? Swap the yep, swap the row two, row three. So I want that zero. I want this zero uh, down below. So the way to do that, the easiest way to do that is make a swap right here. So what's another easy move to reduce the third row a little bit? We got our zeros. How can I turn that 6 into a 1? What do I multiply by? 1 6. At this point, it's really hard to avoid fractions. <coughs> There's a point where you get to where it's hard to avoid fractions, and this is it for this particular system. <coughs> now, 
Now we have 10 sixth, which is 5 thirds. All right, we're almost there. All we need to do now, we're done with column two. So column one, column two, both finished. We have to work in column three. And what we want to do is use the one that's already there and knock out the uh, non-zeros in that column. So I want to knock out the one and the minus two. So in row two, we're going to go minus row three. And then for row one, we're going to go plus two, row three. So we have one, zero, zero. Five thirds times two is 10 thirds. Minus a third is 7 thirds. Or 10 thirds minus 3 thirds is 7 thirds. 0, 1, 0, row 2. Minus 5 thirds, row 3. All right, once you have reduced row echelon form, You can write out the system with regular notation and regular equation notation. If you have this situation, you can just go right into point notation, x, y, z equals. You can see x, y, and z. 7 thirds, negative 5 thirds, positive 5 thirds. So there's our solution. So this process can be time consuming. On your quiz, you don't want to be learning how to do row operations. You want to be already uh, relatively quick at doing them. So you can focus on other things on your quiz. But there will definitely be row operations on your quiz this week.